step into the enigmatic world of The Prisoner, a 1967 TV series that defies conventional storytelling. As our protagonist wakes up in a seemingly idyllic village with no memory of how he arrived, you'll be drawn into a web of mystery and intrigue. But beware, for this journey is not for the faint of heart. The Prisoner unfolds with a series of funny, shocking, and sad revelations that will keep you glued to the screen. Wondering how this unconventional series has impacted lives? Share your personal story in the comments below. What makes The Prisoner an enduring symbol of the industry? Uncover its timeless qualities that have left an indelible mark on television history. Stay tuned for more surprises and don't miss the chance to reminisce about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic series. We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Keep watching for more revelations. A television series from 1967, The Prisoner, known simply as The Prisoner, stands out as a thought-provoking and intelligently crafted show. Even after more than 30 years since its creation, the series continues to captivate audiences, showcasing a timeless quality in its narrative. A recent viewing of the initial four episodes left a lasting impression on a new generation, highlighting its ability to resonate across different eras. At its core, the show explores the fundamental question of freedom. The protagonist, portrayed by renowned actor Patrick McGuhan, wakes up in a mysterious seaside village where inhabitants lack names and are reduced to mere numbers. He, known as Number Six, faces relentless surveillance and captivity, refusing to disclose the reason behind retirement from espionage. The series delves into profound inquiries about the nature of freedom, whether it is an inherent human right or a bestowed privilege within a societal framework. Notably, an episode titled Living in Harmony gained controversy for its anti-war and anti-government undertones, addressing the citizens' right to refuse defending their community without explanation. The storytelling throughout is compelling, prompting viewers to contemplate the moral dilemmas faced by the character. However, some critics expressed dissatisfaction with the concluding episode, which left many questions unanswered. This deliberate ambiguity, though, is a key element of the show's appeal, encouraging audiences to use their imagination to fill in the gaps. Fans of McGuhan's previous work, such as Secret Agent, might speculate on a connection between the two series. While the link remains debatable, The Prisoner serves as an engaging choice for enthusiasts of spy dramas and avant-garde narratives that challenge conventional understanding. In the world of the show, the utterance of the phrase be seeing you takes on a weighty significance, symbolizing a state of constant surveillance within the confines of the enigmatic village. As viewers follow number six struggle for autonomy and identity, they grapple with the overarching theme of freedom and its complex manifestations. In conclusion, the series endures as a compelling exploration of philosophical and societal concepts. Its ability to provoke thought and evoke discussions on timeless themes contributes to its lasting legacy in the realm of television. This review offers a glimpse into the show without divulging specific details, inviting prospective viewers to embark on their own journey of interpretation and contemplation. Annette Andre openly expressed her disdain for working on the Prisoner series, citing displeasure with set designs and a strained relationship with Patrick McGuhan. Interestingly, due to ITV's regional quirks, North Wales viewers had to wait until 1970 when HTV acquired the series. In the US, it debuted on American TV in 1968, serving as a summer replacement for a Jackie Gleason show. The challenges on set were palpable, and her candid remarks shed light on the behind-the-scenes tensions that often accompany the creation of television classics. While the series eventually found its way to North Wales, the delay in its broadcast added a layer of anticipation for viewers in that region. HTV's acquisition marked a turning point, offering a fresh opportunity for audiences to immerse themselves in the mysterious world crafted by the creators. The Prisoner's journey across the Atlantic showcased its international appeal, with American audiences encountering this enigmatic series during the summer months. The decision to replace a Jackie Gleason show with the TV show sparked curiosity and discussion, leaving a lasting impact on viewers. An unexpected pairing, it became a unique moment in television history, a collision of two distinct styles that captivated audiences. In retrospect, the show's unconventional path to North Wales and its unexpected debut in the U.S. added to the intrigue that surrounded it. 
In a unique twist of reality-inspiring fiction, co-creator George Markstein delved into a real-life counterpart to the village, chronicling its existence during World War II in his book The Cooler. This remote facility aimed to safeguard individuals privy to sensitive information, mirroring the show's mysterious setting. A proclamation within the series echoes beyond its airtime, as one number two asserts that the village serves as a blueprint for the world. Some enthusiasts find a prophetic resonance in this statement, observing the escalating levels of public surveillance, especially in the 21st century. The ubiquity of CCTV in developed countries and the indispensability of identification numbers draw uncanny parallels, contributing to the notion of a global village. In a curious alignment of birth dates, Patrick McGuhan and his on-screen alter ego, number six, share a common birthday according to the arrival episode March 19, 1928. This intriguing synchronicity adds an extra layer of connection between the actor and the character he portrayed. The show's narrative transcends its initial broadcast with elements rooted in historical events and eerily prescient societal reflections. The prisoner's impact extends beyond the confines of its fictional world, leaving a thought-provoking imprint on the real one. In Free For All, a brief glimpse into the village unfolds at the Cat and Mouse pub, offering a unique setting. Departing from the norm, living in harmony, and Fallout opted for episodes without opening credits, a distinctive choice for a 1960s TV series. Despite attempts by writers, Patrick McGuhan insisted on keeping number six free from romantic entanglements throughout the series. In Chimes of Big Ben and A Change of Mind, potential love interests were introduced but met with McGuhan's disapproval. The closest to romance is seen in the camaraderie with Allison in The Schizoid Man and an observer's infatuation in Dance of the Dead. The series, with its deviations and unique choices, continues to intrigue, adding depth beyond its initial broadcast. The iconic building in Port Marion, featured as Number Six's house, has transformed into a gift shop catering to enthusiasts of the series, offering prisoner-themed merchandise. Various attempts were made to bring the prisoner to the big screen, with Patrick McGuhan contemplating a sequel set a century after the original series. A film project announced in 2001 with McGuhan as executive producer and Simon West as director was shelved by 2002. During the series, the Eerie Rover, a mysterious spherical guardian, was maneuvered by attaching it to its victim through wires in specific shots, adding a unique touch to the show's visual effects. The prisoner's impact extended beyond TV as Port Marion's transformation, and the persistent efforts for a cinematic adaptation showcased the enduring fascination with this unconventional series. Peter Swanwick, known for his role as the supervisor in The Prisoner, passed away before the series concluded its initial run in the UK. His distinctive delivery of Orange Alert remains a memorable aspect of the show. The costumes featured in the series were the sports uniforms of Mill Hill School in North London. Patrick McGuhan, residing near the school while developing the series, adopted their eccentric blazers and ties in chocolate and white colors. During this time, McGuhan formed a friendship with actor Ian Carmichael, and the two would walk their Labradors in the school grounds. The enigmatic finale of the series stirred controversy to the extent that legend has it Patrick McGuhan had to go into hiding for a period. The bold conclusion left audiences debating and speculating on its meaning. The controversies surrounding both the series and its conclusion have become integral to its legacy, leaving a lasting impression on viewers.